I want to move on to finish today's session by just thinking about the value that you provide, the value that you achieve for people in your work. One of the challenges with lockdown is that sometimes all we hear about are complaints. We sort of, because we're working from home often or because we're furloughed, we're losing, sometimes people have said to us that we're losing touch with the fantastic things that you're able to achieve. I love working with your sector. It's, it's a brilliant sector to work with. I'm not gonna make myself a fortune working with your sector, but it's a great sector to work with. And it's because you're also passionate about what you do. And I know that a lot of the things that you do have a significant impact upon people, upon communities, upon students, upon, uh, upon people with niche interests. I know that you have a fantastic um, impact upon people's lives. During lockdown, we sometimes lose touch with that fantastic impact because of being isolated in our houses in our homes we don't really see what's going on we don't hear the fantastic things we tend not to hear or we hear less of the fantastic things we're doing so it, this affects our well-being a key aspect of well-being is is the way we feel about ourselves and what we do so what i want to do now is to finish off by just focusing a little bit on what is known as a personal <laughs> elevator pitch so i'm just laughing at some of the comments from the previous exercise a personal elevator pitch. So, this game, this is an exercise that's really, really worth doing on a regular basis. Just remind you of the fantastic things you do. It's exercising your feelings about yourself. So, I want you to think about and write down on a piece of paper what impact you achieve. Now, I don't mean what you do for work. Because when it boils down to it, actually in lockdown, what we do is we sort of get up in the morning and we look at pieces of paper or we look at a computer screen or we have a chat to people. I don't mean what do we do. I mean, what impact do we have? What impact do we have and what impact have we had upon people out there in the community? What impact have we had upon people's lives? What impact have we had upon students maybe, depending upon what we're doing? What impact have we had upon people that are interested in a particular subject? You know, I've, done, I've been doing lots of work with the National Archives on the impact of, of archives on people's well-being. And I know that it has a significant impact upon archives have, and the services around archives have a specific, have a, bit, a fantastic impact upon people's well-being. So I just want you to make some notes about, not long notes, notes that are going to take up around seven or eight seconds to say because that's the amount of time you've got in a lift. That's why it's called an elevator pitch. So what is it that you're actually achieving for people? What difference are you making to people's lives? I want you to make this compelling, really powerful. I want you to write it in language which is, um, which is very, very compelling and exciting. For me, for me, I... Um, you know, I never say to people what I am, you know, I, I work as a coach and a facilitator and trainer and consultant and I've sort of half written a book. Well, I've told the publisher that I've almost finished. It's not true. I've sort of half written it. Um, so a speaker, a writer, trainer, facilitator, coach. But I don't say that to people. For what, what I do is I seek to help people to enhance their well-being. So I seek to make a difference to people's well-being and their resilience and help people to solve complex problems so that it makes a genuine difference to people's lives. Now, what I do is to do that is irrelevant, actually. So I want you to think about the impact, just the impact that you have on people's lives. I'm gonna give you another minute just to write down some notes. Okay, hopefully you've got something powerful written down. Try and make the language as powerful as possible. 
Think of the service you provide through the eyes of the people whose lives you're making a difference to. And, and, th and think about how you make them feel. What difference you can make to people. There can be nothing better, surely, than actually making a difference to people in a way that they remember. When people come back to me and say, we worked with you a year or so ago and something that happened in that workshop might not have been something that I said, but something might have been something that other people said. Something that happened to them has changed the way they are. Then that feels fantastic. Think about that in terms of what you do. Now then, what I now want you to do, and this is where it might seem a little bit strange, but I can't see you. I can't hear you. Nobody can see you. Nobody can hear you, except for the people in your own house who probably think you're a little bit strange in any case. So what I want you to do is to stand up and to say out loud your elevator pitch. To say out loud what it is, what impact you are having upon people out there in the communities. And I want you to say it with an absolute passion. To stand up, walk around and say it with a passion. You can say it to your dog, say it to your cat, say it to people, or just say it to yourself. I don't mind. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do it again, but this time with even more passion. In fact, I'm going to ask you to do it another three times with increasing passion. I want you to say, you know, for me, I want you, uh, for me, I'm going to be saying, I, in my, in my job, in my work, I make a tangible difference to people's well-being. I help people to solve complex problems. I help teams to solve complex problems. And I make a difference to people's well-being and resilience so that everything they want to achieve in their life is easier. I can make a real difference. I can leave people with a lasting changes which make everything easier for people to do. So I want you to stand up again, walk around and say it with increasing passion three more times. Okay, go for it. I can hear it. I can hear it resonating all around the country. Wouldn't it be funny if there was somebody who lived next door to me who was actually, and I could hear it oh, somewhere. Okay, another 30 seconds, keep it going. When you're finished, come back to your seat just type into your notes how that makes you feel, whether that makes you feel any different, um, or, or any reflections on, on, on what you've just done. Yeah, Lisa saying that, um, saying this out loud made me smile. I feel confident about your impact. 
you've got every reason to be confident about your impact. Yeah. Um, you know, the synthesizing into an elevator pitch, this is not only useful in terms of your well-being, it's also really useful in, for other things. It's useful in terms of advocacy, when you're trying to do the brilliant work that I know a lot of you are trying to do in terms of ad advocating for your service, and that needs to be done, advocating for enhanced funding um, to grow your services and to maintain your services, but also great in terms of interviews as well. Great in terms of interviews. Mm. It, it doesn't come that, do you know, I think there's a correlation between people, um, so Rachel mentioned it doesn't come naturally, but it definitely makes me feel proud. I think there's a correlation between people that do have a real impact and people feeling uncomfortable talking about it. I think the people that have the greatest impact are often the people that feel the most uncomfortable saying it. The people that often talk about the impact that they have are often people that aren't actually having an impact at all. But I think, you know, often people that have a fantastic impact often feel a bit uncomfortable talking about it because their, fo their focus is on actually doing something. It's not about the PR, it's not about doing something. But the reason why this exercise is important, and uh, Catherine's mentioned, it gets you outside of the daily grind. It is so difficult when we're working from home or when we are working in a way that doesn't interact with many people, it is so difficult to, rem to, to um, remind ourselves of the value that we're actually achieving because we get sucked into this sort of daily routine. And we've got to remind ourselves because that's what's going to give us the inspiration to carry on to do brilliant things in the new world that we are now living in. The other thing is, that it does remind you that you've got to focus on the things that do make a difference. A lot of things that um, we tend to that occupy our mind, going back to the sphere of influence, are things that actually aren't really that significant. So it reminds us to absolutely focus on what makes a real difference. <laughs>